Over the course of this video series, we've seen how Einstein's theory of general relativity describes gravity not as a pulling force between two objects, but as an effect of the curvature of space-time, where a massive object will curve the space-time around it, and that curvature of space-time will change how objects in that region move. And we've seen how this addresses a number of the issues that we noticed with, with Newton's theory and how it matches a number of observations that we've, we've seen within our solar system. Observations like the orbit of Mercury, uh, the bending of light around the sun from, from stars that are behind the sun, and the gravitational redshift, as, as well as a number of other effects. So we might ask, what's there left to do with, with uh, general relativity? So we want to look at what are the areas of current research? And the truth is that there are a lot of areas that, that are still being actively studied with general relativity. So first, our tests of general relativity, the things that we've used to verify that the theory is actually correct, most of those tests have been done within the solar system. So for example, like the Mercury orbit or the bending of light around the sun. But unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, the gravity within the solar system is not all that strong, especially compared to the gravity just outside of a black hole or a neutron star, some extremely small heavy object like that. So we don't have many uh, pieces of observational evidence that test what happens when we have strong gravitational fields. So we want to see what happens when we have extremely uh, strong curvatures to the space-time because the theory of relativity makes different predictions for what effects we would see if we had a very strong gravitational field. There are also modifications to general relativity that say slightly different things about what would happen in these strong gravitational fields. These modify theories when we have just weak fields like we do in the solar system, the differences between those modified theories and just straight GR are so small that we can't even detect the difference. But if we could study systems with strong gravity, then we would have a better understanding of are these modified theories of gravity, of general relativity, do they have something to them or is just normal general relativity enough? So that's one of the uh, one of the things that we want to study. Another thing that is actively being researched by many groups are gravitational waves. Where gravitational waves are small changes to the curvature which can move move and propagate out uh, in a very similar way that we have electromagnetic waves that are like light, we can have gravitational waves and that will change the, uh, as those gravitational waves pass by an object, it will change the shape of those objects very, very slightly. So we have some indirect evidence that gravitational waves exist uh, by looking at the in spiral of, of uh, binary pulsars of, of two pulsar systems which are orbiting each other. So we have two pulsars and they're spinning inwards towards each other but we want to make direct observations of gravitational waves and this would not only allow us to study the effects of, of general relativity which predicts these gravitational waves but would also allow us to study systems that emit gravitational waves so we would be able to make a telescope that instead of seeing light coming from distant objects, it will see the gravitational waves coming from distant objects. And I'll do a whole probably video series on gravitational waves and, and how we study them. So the next area of research is we've talked about how to solve the Einstein equations, Einstein's equations which relate how space curves to the 
to the matter and energy that's in that space, but we can only solve it exactly in very simple cases. So what happens when we don't have a simple case, when we have something like two uh, neutron stars or two black holes colliding with each other? Well, in those case, cases, we can't solve the equations by hand, so we need to use computers to solve them numerically. So we have a field called numerical relativity. Where we get computers to solve for these, uh, these weird geometries that are created as we have uh, large heavy objects colliding or, or in just no, very complicated space times. And uh, there's actually an example of this that I have here. So uh, I got this video off of YouTube. I believe this was done, this simulation was done by a research team led by a guy named John Baker. I, I believe that's where it came from. But we have two black holes here, and they are going to orbit in and eventually collide with each other. And these curved shapes, uh, these kind of yellowish curved shapes, represent the curvature of space-time. So if I play this video, we see the two objects orbiting each other, and they're going to gradually spiral inwards. And this is where the gravity is extremely strong, so it's a kind of a strong test of it. And if we zoom out, so this is just a zoom out of that picture, then we see these gravitational waves that I mentioned before, which are emitted away from these black holes as they collide. And the idea is maybe we could, maybe we could actually uh, uh, measure those gravitational waves as a way of seeing these two black holes colliding. So that was a, uh, one example of a simulation. And these simulations take the largest supercomputers that we have. They're very, uh, very difficult to do even for computers. So we need new ways of, of being able to run those simulations uh, to higher and higher degrees of accuracy. The last thing that I wanna talk about right now is what happens when we have extremely strong gravitational fields in extremely small areas? Uh, for example, at the centers of black holes or in the first moment of the Big Bang, you might have heard that there are these things called singularities. And that's where basically the equations of general relativity break down because the space is just too curved. We get, start getting infinite values for the curvature. And if you have a, a theory where you get infinite values, it, usually means that you're using the theory in a region that the theory can't deal with. So this leads us to a, a need for a quantum theory of gravity. Because when we deal with very small objects, quantum mechanics comes into account. And currently, if we try to use these two separate theories uh, on the same problems, we usually end up getting nonsense results, like the probability of something happening is infinity percent. So we need to come up with a new formulation of gravity that includes what happens when we have very small areas. And there's a number of uh, fields that try to do this, uh, a number of theories that have been proposed. For example, string theory, which tries to link gravity in with the other fundamental forces and describes particles not as as infinitely small points but as these kind of uh, uh, strings and loops and extended objects as a, as a different way of, of approaching gravity or there there's a loop quantum gravity so uh, often short form is LQG loop quantum gravity that describes gravity as being made up that describes space and time that describes space time as being made up of small individual pieces so just as if you look at your desk it's made up of individual atoms but looks very smooth we say that space itself uh in our perspective looks very smooth but is actually made up of individual pieces it implies that there's a smallest amount of size that you can have with your space time so Whereas general relativity describes space as being as being smooth and continuous, in loop quantum gravity, space would be made up of individual particles. So we see that there is a need for a more fundamental theory of gravity, but 
over the course of this video series, we have seen how much general relativity has been able to uh, accurately describe and predict and how useful a theory it has been. And again, this theory has completely changed our perception of how the universe around us works. And uh, in, in future video series, I'll go into some of the details on black holes and, and gravitational waves and maybe even even some of these uh, these quantum theories of gravity gravity eventually, uh, but we'll save those for future video series.